I'm sure you all can remember a time when you were a child and you suffered from an ear infection. It was no big deal. It was just a little discomfort in the ears, you had to take some medicine, and that was it. Fast forward to adulthood. You go to the doctor and they tell you you have an ear infection and you are absolutely miserable. It's amazing how resilient children can be with some of these illnesses. We're actually going to take a look at a patient that we've seen in these videos before. This patient suffers from adult chronic ear infections and utilizes PE tubes. You can see a little glimpse of it right there, that little blue back by the eardrum. We've worked with this patient for many years. What we're removing is a combination of earwax and some drainage from the middle ear. So as we get this stuff out of the way, we're going to be able to see the eardrum. We can see how it's a little bit discolored. And then we can see the blue PE tube. It's almost like a straw sticking through that eardrum. Every time we see these, we always try to record the video because PE tubes in adults are not nearly as common as PE tubes in children. Look at all that that came out. As we look back in, again, we get a great view of the eardrum. So why do we use pressure equalization tubes for adults? Well, they basically help to prevent ear infections. They allow airflow between the outer and middle ear, especially when the eustachian tube is not functioning properly. This allows for the equalization of pressure and also allows for that middle ear space to dry out. When the fluid builds up in that middle ear space and the eustachian tube's not working, the fluid has no place to go. It just sits in the middle ear, causing some major issues. The great part about PE tubes, it allows that fluid to just drain out into the ear canal and allows airflow to help to keep dry that middle ear space, which is supposed to be air filled. Now in this patient's case, they only have a PE tube in one ear, but they do have history of ear infections bilaterally. So we're gonna go ahead and clean out this other side. As you can see, it's pretty impacted. So we're using the curette to start the process and get it removed. This patient does tend to produce the type of wax that stays together almost like big skin ribbons. So we're gonna use alligator forceps to help to remove that big chunk of skin and see what it looks like back there. This patient also has collapsing canals. So as the canals collapse, it kind of pinches the wax and skin back there and really makes it difficult for that wax to naturally come out. Even though the ears are technically self-cleaning, when you do have collapsing canals, sometimes that self-cleaning mechanism doesn't always work. If you like these wax removal videos, please take a moment to like and subscribe. They really do help the YouTube algorithm and get this content in front of more people. As you can see, we're using those alligator forceps, slowly trying to break that skin and wax free. And look at that nice long ribbon. That's about an inch long. That's quite a bit of wax and quite a bit of dead skin. As we look down, we can see the eardrum and we definitely see a little bit of irritation where the skin was attached. Given this patient's history and knowing that they're gonna be going back to see their primary care doctor and ENT in the future, we're gonna leave the rest of that back there for the ENT to get a really good view. This has been You Heard It Here with Dr. Gary. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.